Hello my dear students, I hope you are doing great and this class is about plastid, a very unique uh, organelles and the largest organelles of plant cell. As you know that in this series lecture we are studying about the cells and tissues which is especially the uh, chapter of SSC Biology chapter 2 and in case of O-level Biology unit 1. So in both cases uh, in O-level Biology and SSC Biology uh, this chapter uh, special cells and tissues are the foundation of biology as I said it earlier. So in this class I will only explain about plastic in a very simple way. So I wrote some, some sort of information already in the whiteboard so you see that plastic is called the kitchen of the cell. Why it's called the kitchen of the cell? Because we know we have uh, in our home we have a kitchen that produces food. So usually the cells actually, uh, what I said that in case of autotrophic, that who usually develops their own food inside the cells and the responsible organelles are the plastid. As we know that this plastid is the largest organelles in the plant cell, so we need to know more about it very effectively. So this is the factory, also it's called the factory of synthesis of sugar. Actually, it's not about sugar, it's about the carbohydrate because we know that in our entire animal kingdom, those who are heterotrophic, or that means the dependent for the plants because of the food, because the chloroplast, I mean this plastic, because it has the power, it has the process to, to transformations of the solar energy into the chemical energy and that's why it stored food and that is why the plastic is important. So I wrote some sort of information here because throughout the process I already explained some sort of organelles and in plastic the invention history if we see we must know the name Schrimper in 1883 who invented first the plastic and of course this plastid is the largest organelles in the plant cell, not in animal cell because animal cell doesn't uh, require the doesn't have the plastid. And of course, it, this is the unique characteristics of plant cell. But, 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 my dear, this is a fungus, fungus, uh, bacteria, and blue, green algae. They don't have plastid. They don't have plastic. So fungus, bacteria, and blue-green algae. They don't have plastic. But the other plants, and those are actually higher plants and unicellular plants. Also, they have uh, the plastic. So in case of understanding the invention, we need to know Schimper invented 1883. And the types of plastic, we know there are three special types of plastics. Naming one, leucoplast. Naming two, chromoplast, and naming three, chloroplast. In case of leucoplast, we know that there are uh, blood cells in our body, that is leukocytes, which is called colorless. So in this case also, the plastid, which has no color, actually no color because sunlight is not depending on it. So without the sunlight, they are actually colorless. So these type of plastid are situated where? The sunlight can go through. So leucoplast, it means the colorless plastid. And then chromoplast, this is also colorful plastid because there are some pigments, the color pigments situated inside the chromoplast. And these are xanthophils, carotenes, phycoerythrins, and phycocyanins. As you know, that xanthophils is the pigments which is responsible for yellowish thing and carotene is orange red. So what I see in the huge uh, colorful plant kingdom, these colors is responsible for this plastic, especially chromoplast. And in case of understanding the chloroplast, we know this is the only green plastic because they're inside a chlorophyll. So these chlorophyll is responsible, that particles is responsible for transformations of solar energy to the chemical energy. As we know that photosynthesis is the process of producing sugar, like C6, H12, O6, actually sugar. So these 
is the main food that plants are producing through the plastid and that is why plastid is important so understanding the types we know there will be three types number one leucoplast number two chromoplast number three chloroplast this chloroplast is actually green and the chromoplast is loads of colors like all other colors but because of that have some sort of different pigments are there but in case of chloroplast only chlorophyll so understanding this in case of uh, number if uh, the question is how many plastic can be present in a cell average the number in case of a number we can say we can say there can be like 10 to 40 plastic per cell 10 to 40 plastic and uh, it varies in case of higher plants there will be more like 40 or even 50 uh, plastic per cell and in case of size in case of size and shape in case of size and shape we can say that plastic can be maximum lens shape so actually in case of uh, in case of lens shape we can have 3 to 5 micrometer of plastic and there can be like a star shape cylindrical shape and loads of other shapes plastic can be present as well but in average we know that maximum uh, plastic and lens shape which is 3 to 5 micrometer and understanding the structure of plastic we need to draw a plastic very effectively like we see that in plastic there will be a two as this is a lens shaped plastic there will be two layers and this is very important that these layers is made up of lipid and protein this is very important so uh, here this is the outer layer we say this is outer layer and the inner layer huh? this is inner layer and most importantly these layers is made up of protein and lipid that is why this is called the lipoprotein layer and of course this is bilayers as it is two layers so this bilayers is made up of lipid and protein and of course in lipid in lipid there is no phospholipid there will be glycosyl glycerides so this is important this is actually by layer okay as because there are two layers and these layers is made up of lipid and protein and these lipids in this lipid there is no phospholipid hmm? there is there is no phospholipid phospholipid this is very important no phospholipid but there will be glycosyl glycerides so glycosyl glycerides this is present this is not present so this is some sort of like internal and inner explanation of plastid i will only explain in this video i will only explain for ssc level biology because in intermediate level biology there will be other more informations more ultra informations about plastid so i shall remain in ssc level so firstly we know that in plastic there will be a bilayer membrane which is semi permeable and this is also made up of protein and lipid in case of lipid there is no phospholipid but there is presence of glycosyl glycerides inside the plastic there will be a plate like substance which is called thylakoid and these thylakoids are like this so these are the thylakoids and these thylakoids actually called the granum and this summation of thylakoid creates the granum and there are several granum the presence in the plastic and most importantly this is very important 
This granum and this granum, two adjacent granum, are connecting with the very thin tubes, and these tubes is called the lamellum. Lamellum, and there will be another, another uh, granum is present is distributing throughout the whole plastid and these adjacent plastids are connected with each other so this is very important and of course inside there will be this dark red black substance this is a matrix so very specially the matrix of plastid is known as stroma is known as stroma so if I define this, this will be stroma, okay? This is stroma. And you see this, uh, this plate-like substance which is called the granum. This is actually granum, granum. And adjacent granum are connecting each other through these tubes. This is called the lamellum, lamellum. So, this is actually lamellum and there are stroma lamellum and granum lamellum as well because if two adjacent granum is connecting each other this is called the granum lamellum and if a granum is connected with the stroma not with the granum this is called the stroma lamellum so in chloroplast in chloroplast i mean in plastic this granum can be, I mean, 10 200 thylakoid. Thylakoid consists one granum. So I can say that one granum, granum is consists 10 200 thylakoid, and in plastic there will be like. 40 to 60 or even 40 to 80 granum like substance so in plastic there will be 40 to 60 granum so what you can see in this picture that i draw one two three four five gram but in one granum there can be like 10 to 100 thylakoids and of course in in a plastic there can be like 40 to 60 granum presence in the same plastic. So this is very important. And also you need to know that inside plastic there will be a circular DNA. There will be a circular DNA and of course there will be also the presence of ribosome inside, inside plastic. And these ribosomes, these are the ribosomes, which is also the storehouse and the production of the synthesis of uh, protein. So this is actually the ribosome, ribosome, which is 70 S types, and this is circular, circular DNA can be present in the plastid. So to wrap up the whole structure, we need to know some basic things that plastid is a key feature of plant cell and the largest organelles of plant cell which is the responsible for the photosynthesis and photosynthesis is a process where the whole animal kingdom is dependent so plastic is the largest and the unique characteristics organelles of the plant cell in case of understanding the invention this is Schimper in 1883 who first invented a name of the plastic in types of types, we have three different types of plastid. Leucoplast, chromoplast, and chloroplast. We already explained about the chloroplast here, but to understand the leucoplast, this is colorless plastid. Understanding of chromoplast, there will be the presence of some pigments. For that reason, it is responsible for different and beautiful colors. And that beautiful colors causes the pollinations that means that attracts the insects and other uh, like honeybees and other things that even birds they come and then collect the grains from the flower and then indirectly causes the pollinations and you know that pollinations is the is the process of the reproduction of plants which is 
happening through this colorful process. So understanding the function of plastid, we know that there are two main functions. Number one, it produces and store food. Number two, for the color and due to the different color, it is the main reason of pollination, which is the reproduction of plants. So we have three different plastid, xanthophylls, carotene, phycocyanin, and phycoelytrins. These are the pigments. And in this class, we already explained about the chloroplast, which is actually the green plastid because of the presence of chlorophyll. Hey, we will explain this chlorophyll and we will need to know a lot about chlorophyll because in times of uh, photosynthesis we will have a series of biochemical process which will, be, um, uh, which will make us to understand how the photosynthesis will happen. So this is a very simple lecture on plastid. We know that plastid is called the kitchen of the cell and of course it's known as the factory of synthesis of sugar. It means sugar means carbohydrate. Number, in case of higher plants we got the plastid in lens shape and the diameter uh, will be 3 to 5 micron. And understanding the structure of plastid, it's very important to know this is a bilayer membrane which is present the protein and lipid and in case of lipid there is no phospholipid but there is glycosyl glycerides. Inside plastid there will be a granum. So more about 40 to 60 granum may be present in the chloroplast and each and every single granum will be <clears throat> composed of like, well, like thylakoid membranes, like plate-like substance and each granum like two adjacent granum is connecting with the tubes, which are very fine tubes, it's called the lamellum. So with the granum, this will be granum lamellum, with the stroma, it will be stroma lamellum. And there will be the presence of circular DNA, and also there will be a ribosome, which is 70S Wedwerk unit types. So, very shortly, this is the plastid, and of course, when you will learn about plastid, you must know one thing, that uh, the functions, huh? I just wrote the functions. In case of understanding the functions, you must know that uh, number one, this is uh, produce, produce and store, store carbohydrates food. And number two, the indirect pollination. Indirect pollination. So, this is actually the responsible for this color is actually responsible for um, what for the pollinations of attracting insects and honey bees and other things so that this is a part of nature and this is the beauty of the creative uh, almighty so uh, this creativity uh, we need to know what's going on inside, we need to know what's actually happening in our surroundings and how this beautiful process is being done since the starting of the earth and that's why we have a developed brain. So students, those who are studying right now in English versions and also O level, please, my earnest request to you all that uh, you just keep in touch with me and do it. We know what is the requirement. I'm trying my level best to upload all the classes, all the lectures in physics, chemistry and biology regarding each and every single fragmentations of the topic. And hopefully throughout the playlist you will have the full essence of my lectures so you can understand well your study and of course through your recommendations I will adjust my next lecture. So see you. Take care, stay well, stay blessed, bye.